thankless, daunting, impossible. Just some of the words that could be used to describe the job of a football referee. In spite of that, it's a job in constant dependence of one group, youngsters. See, when I was a younger, I was diagnosed with a condition called brittle bone, which obviously is still today, but it's obviously developed and, you know, I'm better for that now. But when I was younger, it was a special risk of playing football and the risk of having a fracture or a break. Meet Niall Smith. After his diagnosis removed any hopes of a playing career in football, he took to refereeing in 2010, aged 14. Now 21, he's progressed through the FA's ranks of officiating from level 10 to level 4. He's become a regular man in the middle in the 8th tier of English football and has even taken his role to the under-19s Premier League. And he's just one of the many young refs building the next generation of football. I played all my life, so at a parents' evening, my mum actually went into school. Um, her and my PE teacher came up with the idea of coaching or refereeing. And then it was my PE teacher who went and actually had a look at the courses available. The rest, they say, is history in terms of what happened. Young referees like Niall are the future of the game, yes, but they're also the here and now. In fact, over 50% of Staffordshire's referees are 20 years old or younger, and one in 116 year old refs will take charge of a Premier League game one day. I would love to make it to the Football League. You know, I've got years on my side. I've already gone past half the system in terms of levels, you know, 10 to 1. And I've worked and I've got the support around me. I've got my name in there. With the stream of junior refs so poignant in shaping the future of English football, it seems unwarranted that they are targeted as the outlet for the frustrations of just about everybody in the game. Abuse towards referees has become synonymous with football. A 2017 survey revealed that 94% of referees have received abuse whilst taking charge of a game. 62% said they do not feel that the FA does enough to prevent abuse and 55% have felt scared or threatened on the pitch. Those figures tell a story on their own. It's an issue that needs to be shown the red card. The way I see it, every decision you make, you're going to have 11 people going, that's brilliant, and you're going to have 11 people going, that's terrible. You know, it's the nature of the football. I'm, I'm not the tallest now. Um, so obviously when I was, you know, when I went to adult football at 16, you know, the discipline isn't good already there without a young referee trying to tell them what to do. Games can be difficult and they were difficult for me. I always remember going and doing a Sunday league game, actually it was about three years ago and it was a very local derby and everyone knew everyone and, you know, and that was the game that really was a test because there was, must have been about 50 to 100 people there, I'd never had more than 10 and a dog probably until that stage so um, you know tackles were flying in, descent was high, it was quite a big challenge and I did struggle but I learned a lot at the same time. You know you are going to get difficult days but they're the ones that make you better. <laughs> It's all part and parcel of the game. I'm used to it. I think the, the worst bit was when he was refing uh, use, like you know, the mum and dads giving him abuse. That was the worst bit to take. I just sort of turn a deaf ear to it. I try not to get involved because best for me not to say nothing. So I just stand on my own normally, so I don't have to listen to it. Of course, no referee would enjoy receiving abuse, nor would any parent enjoy watching their child be set upon just for doing their job. But those who have studied football all their life, and those who have officiated all their life, know all about the struggles that face officials every day at the office. I think most sports performers, you know, athletes across the whole spectrum of sports know that whether they get into a ring or on a basketball court or on a football field, they're going to exhibit skills which people will applaud and say marvellous and they'll be admired for it. The referees can do the same, but they're going to be abused for it. I was in Rome a couple of days ago at a conference about uh, racism in football and, and one of the delegates came up with the, you know, what I thought was slightly ridiculous. He said, what we need is more uh, black and ethnic minority referees. And I said, why on earth would anyone from an ethnic minority background want to be a referee? Don't they get enough abuse already? Just like any other fan, I used to stand there and berate the referee and 
berate the linesmen as they were then. And the one day my dad said, well, if you think you can do any, any better, why don't you have a go? Football is a, is a sport, and it's the only one I can really think of where the amount of abuse at match officials is tolerated. We've caused that ourselves, really, uh, by not being not being strong enough. I don't think that the abuse is as bad at the top of the game because I, I find now, and occasionally I, I go down to local parks on a Sunday, walk the dog and whatever, and the players these days just seem to argue about the most obvious of decisions. Whereas in the professional game, if you get one or two players around you, uh, it's probably because they probably realise that you may have made an error. But the level of abuse is a lot more in the lower league now than what it is in the professional game. And with abuse seen to be so rife in the amateur game, I went along to Staffordshire University's senior training to find out what holds the barrier between players and these supposedly power-hungry refs. Sometimes people feel that they just want to voice their opinion and obviously the referee's the one who's in control of the game so sometimes players just feel the need to voice their opinion, sometimes they do it. Miscommunication as yeah, well. Definitely. Some refs communicate really well with the players, some don't. Last week we had a ref who would refuse to tell us why he's made decisions and stuff like that. So that causes frustration for the players. I think as long as the referees have been in the game, I think that they, they, they've probably got a better understanding of what the professionals are looking to do and what the players are looking to do. The younger ones say they haven't had the experience of what um, what the game's about at that level. Thing, if the players know where where the referee's coming from, then then they can cater to that. You know, then they, they can arrange the, the game around that. Usually, when I've played, I've preferred having the younger refs because it feels like they relate to you more, so they communicate with you a lot better than the older refs. That's what I've found. I've had better experiences with young referees because it's like another player like that's, they just yeah. talk to you like more than the older guys do they kind of feel like the ones that are older feel like they're on a level sort of above you because they're a ref whereas the younger ones they like talk to you a lot more than the older ones do players have their opinions and they're entitled to them but there's 22 of them on the pitch plus a manager and coaches and substitutes and hordes of fans so where can referees go to get their support we have 250 associations around the country, usually meeting 10 times a year. So there is an RA fairly close to almost everybody in England. Every member can get additional training, welfare support, representation support, and just everything to do with refereeing. Has the FA got that? No. We like to think we take away a lot of the burden from the referee. We have our procedures in place to help protect those referees um, and we do things actively to try and obviously educate people involved in the football that is, they are still talking to human beings, that is people that are referees, it's not a, a job, it's, a un, it's not a uniform that's saying that you can, you're entitled to abuse these people, people are human and they are involved in football, it's not, it's not position, it is actually human beings doing that job. That message is one very much echoed by Championship referee Stephen Martin, who strives to bring out the personality in all those under his guidance at the Staffordshire FA's referee development meetings every month, where physical endurance is combined with classroom teaching. The goal area must a goal kick be taken when the ball went out of play to the right of the goal. The main purpose is to get across the fitness side of things. The guys need to realise that the higher level they get now, the players are training more. They're a lot fitter, they're a lot faster than they used to be. So if you're going to get to the highest level, you've got to be as quick and as fast as the players. And you're usually third, fourth on the pitch in terms of distance run. So a right back might stay in his position, left back in their position. Referee's always 15 to 20 yards away. So the referees need to be as good fitness-wise, if not fitter at times. So it's getting across the nutrition, the kind of training they need to be doing, and then also the classroom sessions are the main thing they're going to learn from, because they're getting clips that we're learning from at our level as well. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah, so, yeah. Body and that's when he insisted clips in. Because obviously he was foxy, he was telling me about it. And he said, I saw him do that, and I'm thinking, well, it's <laughs> And the budding young refs are reaping the rewards of Steve's efforts. The classroom sessions we have helps us with uh, on-game activities, so you've seen the clips there, serious foul play, handballs, things like that we can all take into our games, but we also discuss the levels that we all officiate at as well, so would that handball on the football league be the same as the handball sort of on our games? The fitness, you know, he's put on by the football league referee, so, you know, he's bringing his, in his sessions that he does um, with Select Group 2, that, that helps us, everybody else, develop our fitness, you know, going into games, um, 
to try and bring the best out of us. Not suited to this one, is it, Marcus? From staff survey point of view, we want these guys to go all the way to the Football League and that's our aim. They're all at the right age, they've all started very young, they're at a good age to be able to progress to the top. But the reason they're here is because we see the potential for them to get to the highest levels. They're showing it and now they need to realise it on the pitch. This invaluable support structure is well recognised and well appreciated, especially as it hasn't always been at the disposal of referees. I think ultimately the ultimate success for them is them pr progressing in their careers. The other way is the enjoyment they get from it. Um, you can see when they come along to the, the group, they, they're the camaraderie, they enjoy it, they learn from it. Uh, and to see the positive effects it has on those referees it is a massive success for us. Years ago, you would pass your referees course and then straight away you're out on the pitch on a Sunday morning refereeing a couple of pub teams who still might be drunk from the night before. Whereas now, right from the time you pass your exam, there's a mentoring system all organised from the local county from where you're refereeing. I would probably say there's never been a better time to start refereeing. There's so much available now for mentoring, because even I've become a mentor now and I look after level sevens, which are those who are just trying to come up the ladder and get promoted through the county. So yeah, there's some really good opportunities now. When I was coming through the system, not so much. Um, it was more off my own back until I got to, let's say, level five, level four. Then the support really has come through. As the game evolves, those in charge need to as well. Junior officials are taking the game forwards, week on week, season on season. The direction of our game is in their hands. Now there's so much youth coming through, I think it's changing the game dynamically. I think it's becoming quicker and it needs younger referees. Players are becoming fitter, there's more money in the game at non-league level. And there's more at stake, so I think younger referees are giving actually quite a new dynamic to refereeing altogether. And I think they can learn a lot from the older referees like I've done, but then vice versa. I think the older referees can now start learning some stuff from the younger referees because they're getting so much advice and support from really good referees in the system. Football is very much a, a young person's game now. Ultimately, we, we need referees at all ages and all levels to actually referee all the games and keep the game going. But if you want to make it to the top of the, top of the list, then you, you do obviously you need a few years' experience. So being the younger, the better it is. We absolutely need and it's, it's imperative that the younger generation start to come through. People say without referees you wouldn't have a game. You would have a game. What sort of a game? I don't know. If you love football and you know, so you know players not for you or coaches not for you, have a game. Referees are now getting an abundance of support and their importance is irrefutable. But perhaps now is the time for the rest of football, players, managers and fans alike to put themselves in a young referee's boots to strive for a better game for all.